Hey angels, welcome back to the joy of gaming with Micromaths. I guess we can call it that at the moment. A working title, you know. It's good to see you all. Welcome back for this episode of Space Quest 2, Vohol's Revenge. Um, I had a lot of really awesome feedback from the previous episode about the fact that you guys were really enjoying this as a kind of asmr -y thing to help you guys get to sleep at night or just something to relax to and have in the background while life's going on. Ooh, hang on, we got plot. Is this music too loud? Hang on. Let me just kick that down a little bit. Oh, never mind, it stopped. You're all welcome. Okay. As you will recall in our last chapter, you had just foiled the Sarian's fiendish plot to rule the galaxy by using the Star Generator as their weapon of destruction. You became a hero by saving countless lives and returning the Star Generator technology into safe hands. Life was beautiful. But heroes come and go, and people soon forget. Your celebrated herodom... That's a hard word to read. Your celebrated herodom slowly fades, leaving you, once again, a janitor. The promotion to head janitor was no consolation, especially since you were the only member of the janitorial staff. Nor was the transfer to Orbital Station 4. Sweating like a pork beast in a pressure suit while relocating space debris in zero gravity just wasn't your idea of a good time. Life sucks. Again. That's rough! That's rough. Super rough. Um, so before we start, I just want to preface this by saying hi. Thank you guys so much for watching my previous playthrough. You have no idea how much it means to me. I'm really excited to be playing this Space Quest with you, Space Quest 2. Um, just a quick note. I was uh, I was pretty pissed with myself that we didn't get uh, we didn't get a super high score. Space Quest 1. That was uh, not a vibe. So we'll, we'll try and do a little bit better, shall we, this time? Something I did learn is that uh, I have to enunciate more when I'm doing YouTube videos because it's much more difficult to um, get my words across. Anyway, shall we continue? Seen on Orbital Station 4. It's where we work. Oh, love a bit of chiptune music. Let's go. Welcome aboard XOS4. To log on for duty, please enter your name below. Up to 18 characters. Well, as you may remember from last time, our name is Roger. Roger Wilco. Orbital Station 4 is one of many orbiting Xenon, your home planet. That's where we live. That's where we're from. We're Xenonians. Xenonians? Yeah, that sounds good. It's a transfer point for travelers seeking transportation to the various planets in the Eonon system. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Roger, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. Sweeping. Sweeping all about this, uh, this outdoor sweeping situation. Look at us go. Sweeping as we do. Oh god. A beep emanates from your wristwatch. A beep emanates from your wristwatch. Wristwatch. I've always had trouble with that word. Because I'm bad at words. You release your grip on the broom. Oh, there he goes. See you later, broom. The broom floats away. Never to be used again. That makes the third one this week. Wait till your boss finds out. <laughs> Rough. Okay. So. Look. Watch. Is your... Good spelling, Mads. As you may remember... This is a point-and-click text uh, typing based game. Same as Space Quest 1. Uh, from Space Quest 4, I want to say, onwards. It's much more point-and-click, but for now, look at our watch. So we've got three buttons here. All right, press H. Your horoscope for today. Keep up the good work. Today could bring that big promotion you think you deserve. Don't take any wooden buckazoids. All right, nice. Press T. 
time, 11.26. Temperature, minus 47 degrees. Oh my god. Alright. Press C. Oh god. Who's this lovely fella? Roger, get in here on the double. You've got a mess to clean up in the shuttle, which just returned. One of the passengers got space sick on the way down. Besides, you should have been done out there an hour ago. Get a move on. Okay. Being absolutely chewed out by my boss. With that, the image disappears. Well, I guess we should go talk to our boss then, shall we? I think we should. So, uh, let's walk up this wall and get on out of here. You are whisked away to the airlock chamber. Amazing. Alright. Here we are in the airlock chamber. Stand by for decontamination. Alright, let's get decontaminated. I missed you guys while I was away. I absolutely did. Alright, we're decontaminated. Feeling fresh, feeling good. Look at this lovely little chest first walk. God, I love this character animation. Alright. No, let's change clothes. I'm gonna have a lot more trouble typing than I usually do today. Um, I know I'm making excuses for myself pretty early on, but um, I have really long nails at the moment. And uh, you can hear them, they're making very clicky noises. And I uh, haven't gone and got them trimmed yet because I am lazy. All right, what's this? Just look, this is the airlock chamber. From here you can gain extra vehicular access. Spare suits hang on the back wall. Some lockers are mounted on the side wall. Alright, well. Look locker. Lockers are all closed. There is nothing too interesting about them. Uh okay. Open. Locker. There we go. Look locker. You bravely peer into the locker to find a Cubics Rube puzzle and your athletic supporter. Ooh, okay. Take. Puzzle. Okay. Take. Supporter. Alright. We've done it. We've got the things. Well, let's uh, look inventory. So, we have on our person, you may remember from the previous- oh no, you can't see this screen for some reason. Right, interesting. So some of the screens aren't loading. Um... Well, we'll have to just work on that. Uh, you are carrying an order form, a dialect translator, supporter, and a puzzle. Okay, so the dialect translator you may remember from the first game. Um... The dialect translator is a small device. It is on. That was what we used to speak to the big alien guy in the first game. Um, and we have supporter and a puzzle. So look, puzzle. Cubic Saru puzzle has made you look stupid more than usual. Nice. And look, supporter. Supporter. This is your athletic supporter. Without close inspection, you notice it to be well used. Thing's gonna smell amazing. Now let's uh, be respectful to our peers and uh, shut this locker. Awesome. Let's get out of here. Man, I love this game series so much. It's really cool playing old games like this. Less to think about it, you know? Alright. Off we go. Well, I get think that's our boss. It's about time you got in here, Roger. Head for the shuttle bay on the double. I'm warning you. You're on your last leg around here, bud. One more screw up and your history. Awesome. Gonna get fired. Then I'm gonna go and like uh, explore the galaxy or do things that free jobless bachelors do. He then orders the transportation officer to send you directly to the shuttle bay and nowhere else until the job has been completed. Awesome. Okay, so I gotta get up to that platform where the shuttle is, but first let's talk to this guy. Ah, uh, the chief's not happy with you, Roger, the man says. <laughs> you better get over to the shuttle bay soon. 
By the way, you still owe me 20 buckazoids. You best cough it up soon. You better get moving, Roger. Don't forget that 20 buckazoids you owe me. Alright. Um, how about you? You better get moving, Roger. Don't forget the 20 bucks here. Well, I guess I owe uh, $100. I'm not even going to talk to those two guys because they'll tell me I owe them money. And uh, I don't want to give them my money. You know what? Do I even have money? I don't think I had money in my inventory. Well, may pose a problem later. Oh well. Let's, uh, let's head to the, head to the shuttle bay. Off we go. Alright, I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. What you are currently watching is about the fourth time I've replayed this specific bit of this because the next thing that happens when we go into that spaceship is there's going to be a whole bunch of text and it's going to move really fast. Like, too fast for me to read out loud. So, bear with me because it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be slower again soon. I got very frustrated. I'm back. Let me just look around real quick. All right, you are in the orbital station's shuttle bay. A shuttle, fresh from passenger drop-off on Xenon, is refueling for its next trip. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway. A refueler replenishes the shuttle's supply. All right, are you ready? I'm gonna read this as fast as I can. You enter the shuttle and start sniffing around for the mess you must clean. You are surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking towards you. Hey, what the? Your favorite expletive here. I'm gonna go with fuck. Because, man, I needed to say that. <laughs> Your protest is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you unconscious. Everything fades. And the text moves so fast. More time passes. A strange dream turns into the realization that you are being shaken and talked to by a voice unfamiliar to you. A dull ache triggers a distance. Oh my god. Upon awakening from your forced rest, it becomes- You know what? Just pause this and read it because I cannot read as fast as this wants you to read. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. As the eyes dial into focus, you make out an oddly disfigured being seated before you. Oh. A sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time. Tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly, his visage stirs and he begins to speak. I don't know why that previous lot of text would not let me just hit enter like this text does to skip it. It just went. It went so fast, I was touching nothing. But now, if I hit the enter key, it moves. Shocking. Anyway, bad programming. Never mind, it's fine. It's an old game. Well, well. Did we have a nice nap? I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. <sighs> oh well. Welcome to my humble fortress, Roger. The name's Vohol. Sludge Vohol. I was the genius behind the star generator when it was still in the concept stages. It was to be my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pants scientist decided it would be better used saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. Anyway, you ruined my Sarian operation. I was going to use the star generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. You somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those- ooh. I don't know if you can use that word. Those mental- mm, Yeah, I'm not going to. That's not the point, however. You are responsible, and you shall pay. Besides, I have another plan, and you'll not have to be around- And you'll not be around to foil it. I've devised a plan so horrible, so frightening, so diabolical, that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation. I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door -door life insurance salesmen. <laughs> I love this game. I will at last reap sweet revenge from the scientific community that mocked me. My plan was to kill you, but I've had a change of heart. Ah, ah, ah. Get it? He peers down at the hoses protruding from his chest and connected to a su life support system. Forgive me. I'm a kidder. I've decided I would get much more enjoyment watching you suffer. 
My associates will escort you to the surface of Le'Veon, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labor in my mines. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that laugh. That's a good laugh. You can tell he's laughing. Nothing, no sound needed to be made. Anyway. An injection renders you unconscious. Your drugged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see Vohol's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller. Whew. Man, it's so frustrating that that one piece of text didn't... just went so fast. Whew. Anyway. Alright. Well, this looks like a bad time for me. After touching down on a giant landing platform, you are ushered to a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets in. Guess I'm about to be trapped on this planet for literally ever. Wish me luck, guys. My two monkey gods take me over there. Look at this absolutely cinematic piece of, uh, piece of landscape going on right here. Off we go. Off we go. Question mark? Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Oh great. I suppose we're out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Breath. Don't blame me. It was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out. You're in big trouble. Hey, don't talk to me that way, you slime bucket. I filled it last time. Dip. Who's gonna call him a dipshit? Nice. The argument between the two guards is cut short as gravity reasserts itself. Adios. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, we're alive. Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it though. No, he looks pretty dead. Anyway, you know what we're gonna do? Right now we're gonna save! Because, uh, this is the first time I've saved on screen. We survived. Thank you, squishy god. Alright, look. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you were used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. Well, let's search. God. You search the grotesque body and find a small, thin, magnetic card. It looks like a key card. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. That's what we used on the, uh, on the Arcada. Take card. Okay, now. Oh, did you say that? A little face just popped up on the right hand side of the screen. You might have to pause the video and go back and check it out. Uh, look craft. The hovercraft has been reduced to a mound of twisted wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is benter. There appears to be no salvageable parts. Uh, search hovercraft. Everything inside is twisted and bent. You do notice a button with a flashing light next to it. It seems to be emitting a high-pitched beep. Press button. You press the button. The light goes dark and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. Well, excellent. All right, now let me just uh, real quick save again because it's entirely possible that I die here. Please don't die here. All right, well, off we go. Oh my god. Well, good thing I saved, hey? Ah, you have fallen to the bottom of a concealed pit. You might have survived the fall had you not come in contact with the several 30 centimeter long spikes planted vertically along the bottom of the pit. Excellent. Awesome. Cool. Another senseless tragedy. You can help prevent this. Vote yes on lobotomies for adventure game designers. <laughs> Thank you for playing Space Quest 2. All right, well, I guess we better restore. No, stop. No, we will walk around. We're better than that. We've learned. 
Oh god. Uh, look. You are standing in a dark and damp portion of the forest. There are some very large mushroom-like growths here. Well, that can't be a good time. Look, mushrooms. Aside from their enormous size, they appear to be your average garden variety mushrooms. Well, maybe they have something that we can take on them. Let's just, uh, stroll up to this one. Nope. Awesome. Holy jeez, boy. That mushroom thing sucked you clean up. You can't move a muscle or see a speck of light. You begin feeling waves of tingling, warmth, and moisture. Suddenly, it's not so bad in here. Wow. Check out the colors, dude. Nice. Your body and mind enjoy the short-lived buzz that is a side effect of the lethal poison you now marinate in. You're oblivious to the end. Not a bad way to go, actually. But it sure is early in the game. I had high hopes for you. They said who? Roger? Not a chance. That chump won't last 20 minutes. I said no way. Roger isn't that lame. So anyway, don't make me look stupid too. Alright. Two deaths. It's been a pleasure watching you play Space Quest 2. Thank you. Alright, let's just restore, shall we? None of that. None of that. Alright, I've got to be a bit more careful with my life this time. Shall we? Just avoid those mushrooms. It's, it is unusual, I will say, that uh, these mushrooms don't uh, to give you anything at all. Usually even the bad stuff, like, has a purpose. But these mushrooms, I don't think they have a single dang purpose. Just to make us feel bad. Now, let's head this way. The foliage here is much too dense for you to pass through. Okay. Can I go up? No. Maybe it's round to the back there. Sometimes it's hard to tell where to go with these uh, fat pixels. Because they truly are chunky. It's really amazing what they've done with like, what, 16 colors? No? Can't go this way? Huh. Hmm. Maybe I made a mistake back here and I actually have to go this way. Oh. Uh look eyes. You must be seeing things. I don't think I am. Ah, here we go. This is better. All right. Look. You're standing in a strange looking stand of woods. All right. Suddenly from somewhere to the east, you hear a twang followed by a high pitched shriek. Okay. Well, we better go check that out then, shan't we? To the east. Okay. Surely it's uh, behind this bush. There's definitely eyes there. You must be seeing things. Oh, okay. Cringe. Making me imagine stuff and see things. Oh my god. I don't know, you hear something, it sounds not unlike the hovercraft you wrecked in. Surely I can get out of here before that's, that gets me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hustle, Roger. Hustle, 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 hustle. Oh! Oh, mother of, mother of, mother of dick. Drats, Rohol's troops have tracked you down and passed sentence for your escape. Tough luck, eh? Damn. All right, note to self, hide next time. You're not that quick. Well. Here's our third restore. Please don't die here. You know, it's all a learning experience, right? Games like this. It's just all a learning experience. Let's hope that little, uh, whatever got caught 
hasn't uh, hasn't perished yet, right? Hmm. Suddenly from the east you hear a twang followed by a high-pitched streak. Okay, awesome. Let's continue onwards and uh, make haste this time so that we don't get zapped to death by monkeys in camo. <laughs> That's how I want to go. Zapped to death by monkeys in camo. Put that on my, like, epitaph. All right. Uh, somewhere to the east. North, south, east, west. No, this is the east. There's nothing here. You would think, as someone who mains a game that you play with a compass, I would know my directions better. Oh. Interesting. So, look. This is another clearing in the otherwise heavily wooded area of the forest. There's a plateau near the back. I'm on the plateau. It is like the other areas, only raised a little. A mailbox sits up there. Oh, right. I know what to do with this. The mailbox looks like a typical mailbox. There's a slot, a tray, and a sign. Read sign. The sign says, Radical Express, for when it totally, no doubt for sure, has to be there a while previously. Okay, now, you may remember, in our inventory, we have a order form. This is an order form you remove from a magazine for a free Labion Terror Beast mating whistle. It's ready to be mailed. All right. Uh, you drop the order form into the box. The mailbox hums and buzzes for a while. Then an object of some sort drops into the tray at the base of the box. The machine goes silent. Book tray. The tray is actually a small indentation in the lower part of the machine. It is currently bearing what looks to be a whistle. Awesome. Take whistle. Okay, now we save, because we got a whistle. All right, objective get, mission accomplished. Now, to go back and rescue that dude that we can't find. It said it was to the east. Maybe it's, maybe it's, the near east instead of the distant east. Well, I mean, one way to find out. These, like I was saying earlier, these big pixels can get kind of confusing. And, uh, a little bit janky. But, you know, such is life. We love playing vintage games. Some people will be very offended for me to call this vintage. There we go. Look. You are in another area of the forest. The growth seems to be getting heavier here. Uh, okay, look. Uh, man? The little creature caught in the snare has thick-looking pinkish skin. He looks to be less than a meter tall. He doesn't seem too thrilled with his predicament. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be either. Were I upside down snared in a strange stand of woods? Help creature. In what way? Okay, untie creature. Creature. You're too far away. Eh. Okay. There we go. See you, little buddy. Oh, he's out. Before disappearing through a tiny hole in the brush, the little creature gives you a long glance. Awesome. You're welcome, dude. I'll catch you later. And now, you may have noticed that back here, there was some stuff in that clearing that we have to go and get. Because as you know, stuff is important in Space Quest. Can't Marie Kondo this situation. You gotta get everything. All right, look. Uh, look, ground. The ground looks like everywhere else, with the exception of some gross, which looks like spores or pods. Okay, so let's just save real quick, because we're gonna 
step on some stuff that we shouldn't step on. Let's step on poison spores. Okay. Do 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 do. Yeah. You seem to have kicked one of these strange little spores. Oh, okay, I'm choking. I'm coughing. And I'm dying. Your kick caused some of the spores to open and spray a fine powder into the air. As a result, you are paralyzed from head to toe, unable to move a single muscle. Okay, now you may notice that the I'm dead music has not started playing. Due to paralysis, you are only capable of displacing air. This is important. I don't quite know how long it's going to make me wait. So, uh... Let's just find out, shall we? I do love this game. I don't know it as well as Space Quest 1. I also don't know it as well as Space Quest 3. I know Space Quest 3 a lot better. I still can't move. Interesting. Hmm. Because I'm pretty sure this is... Designed as a learning experience. Hello? Am I dead? Am I not dead? I've never seen... Oh, here we go. Awesome. Cool. It worked. Fortunately, the paralysis wears off and you seem to be back to normal. So that is a learning experience. Because... We now know that these spores do not permanently paralyze you. You have a time limit. Because that is inevitably going to be important in the future. You take para pos paralysis? You take possession of one of the spores, being careful not to mistakenly break it open. All right, so let me just check my inventory real quick. All right, so we've got Spore Whistle Key Card, Spore Dialect Translator Puzzle, awesome. So we're doing really well right now. Let's just save again. Got spore and learned a thing. Nice. Now, get this mouse out of the way. And let's uh, mosey on up here, shall we? I just realized that I've been playing uh, for an awful long time. So I am going to uh, take a little break, grab some water, and uh, catch you guys on the next episode, all right? See you guys in a bit. Love you, bye.